By now, you've probably heard about Christopher Ward's most recent masterpiece, The Bel Canto. Bursting onto the scene in late 2022, The Bel Canto quickly became a sensation in the watch world, offering one of the most affordable chiming watches on the market. Coming in at under $3,600, Christopher Ward proved that a scrappy watchmaker with less than 20 years of history could compete with the big boys and create a quality watch that stunned the watch community. The watch's proportions on this watch are nearly perfect. The watch's case is 41 millimeters in diameter and just 13 millimeters thick, and it's made out of incredibly light grade five titanium. The watch's case exudes understated class, but the dial in its various polished and sandblasted details really steal the show. The chiming mechanism at the bottom here is clearly the showstopper. The Bel Canto is a chiming watch, more specifically a sonnerie à passage, which audibly chimes once at each passing hour. The mechanism to accomplish this impressive feat consists of an in-house module at the bottom here with 50 plus components, all of which sits on top of a Salita SW200 movement. For reference, similar chiming modules from other watchmakers such as Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, or Omega regularly cost five or six figures and are in very limited production. So for this watch, I gave an overall score of 83.5 out of 100 points. And that's really good. We're talking about a $3,600 watch, not from a major brand. It's not a Rolex, it's not an Omega, but it just puts in an impressive amount of features into a very light, beautiful package and really just punches above its weight. So to get in here, I'm gonna start with some of the grading guide criteria, starting with the design of the watch. And I'm actually gonna pop it off right now on my wrist so we can talk about the watch a little bit more here. So as I mentioned, uh, the case measures 41 millimeters in diameter, and it's about 13 millimeters thick, with a lug to lug of 48 millimeters. The Belcanto's proportions are nearly perfect for every wrist size. The case is finished in Chris Rewards' distinctive light catcher TM style, which utilizes various brushed and polished surfaces to create a dazzling effect as you're seeing here. The fact that Christopher Ward achieves this degree of understated radiance with grade five titanium, which you know isn't the easiest uh, metal to polish uniformly at under $3,600 is incredible. Let's talk about the dial a little bit here. As you can see, I have the Cielo version here, which is a light blue. Um, the dial and its hardware are just the undeniable draw of this watch. This particular model, the Cielo, has a light, almost ice blue hue to it that is just unlike any other watch face I've seen other than maybe an MBF, um, which you know goes into uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. The dial or platine in this case, since the rest of the hardware is actually resting on directly on top of this, um, is just incredible. It has this brilliant sunburst pattern that is subtle when viewed head on, but it's just stunning from every other angle here that you hit, as you can see. Uh, the various bridges, plates, joints, screws, and the hammer mechanism, which is right over here, uh, look fantastic from every angle, and they're expertly finished in a combination of brushed and polished finishes with really, really sharp angles. i bring it up here a little bit, and you can see, if my camera refocuses, that the just the finish on the bridges here and the gong around the edge here is just fantastic. The actual time is read in the floating subdial right up here, located at the 12 o'clock position, which also has lumen filled indices and unobtrusive hands. Well, the point of a watch is generally to tell time. For the Bel Canto, it's actually more important that the time does not distract you from the rest of the watch. It makes sense that both the dial and its hardware are finished nearly flawlessly, as Christopher Ward actually outsourced a lot of this work to some other manufacturers. The dial is produced by Armin Strom. Uh, which, if you look online, their average prices for their watch begin in the mid $10,000 range. And most of the hardware, all the bridges, the plates, um, the screws, uh, are produced by Chronode, uh, which makes many of the intricate parts for MBF's uh, machines. So that's just incredible that Chris Reward, again, was able to work with those suppliers who are clearly experts in their field, um, but were able to do it in a, um, you know, a price that most consumers can actually pay for. Uh, the strap and the bracelet, I gave pretty high marks here, a four and a half out of five. Um, it's just a really, really nice strap. Uh, you have this new back on the back that's just really nice and comfortable. 
Um, you almost forget that you're wearing this watch between the, the titanium case and the strap itself. Um, the Belcanto can be delivered both on a titanium bracelet or a variety of 22 millimeter wide, high quality aniline uh, Vacano leather straps. That's what this one is. I chose the tan one. And I'm just, I was really surprised by just how soft it is, but even though it's soft, it's not cracking, right? It still has a very sup supple, you know, you can twist it, you can turn it, um, and it, it's just not feeling like it's being used. And also the best part is that uh, they come with quick change straps. Um, and another thing I like about Christopher Ward too is, you know, sometimes you get other watch brands like a, um, a Panerai or an IWC, where if you want a replacement strap from the manufacturer, you're going to be paying, you know, three, four, five hundred, maybe six hundred dollars for a leather strap. Uh, Christopher Ward straps, you know, run in the mid hundreds range, uh, you know, one hundred to two hundred dollars at the most. Uh, so it's nice. You can actually you don't have to go search for a fake OEM uh, strap. You can just get one from Christopher Ward at a reasonable price and it's manufactured to spec uh, for their watches. So it's just really nice that they offer, you know, affordable, um, you know, affordable ways to dress up your watch however you want. Um, the strap uh, that I have comes equipped with a, you know, a signed titanium pin buckle, which is nice. You can see here, uh, it's just signed with Christopher Ward's name. Um, really simple, but again, high quality uh, titanium to match the watch itself. And just overall, just a really, really good quality. Um, as you can see here, the bezel um, is nothing too crazy. Um, it just has, you know, some brushed polishing on it. Um, it's a slim sloping bezel uh, that's almost nearly invisible, and I really think that's on purpose. You know, the start of the show is the dial and everything else on the watch. It's designed to focus your eye on the hardware resting on top of this light blue platine. And so the sapphire crystal, crystal extends nearly to the edge of the case, and then it creates this seamless oculus view to really focus your attention on all of the hardware here, including the gong that runs around the whole edge of the uh, bezel. It's just really well done. It's minimalist. Um, you know, there's some brushed work here, but it just really shows that their focus was rightfully uh, on the, the dial side of the watch. Um, originality here, you know, I gave five out of five points because that's just not hard, right? It's not a question. This is original. Um, while Christopher Ward is certainly not the first manufacturer to create a chiming watch, or even the first to create a sonri a passage complication, it's hard to pinpoint any other manufacturer who has put this much of the chiming mechanism on the front of the dial um, in the full view of the wear too, where you can see all the intricate works, right? If it was underneath, uh, if it was on the back side of the case, right, you can hide some unpolished parts. You can, you know, hide some parts under other pieces of the movement that are polished. Here, everything's out in the open. It has to be perfect. Um, and so it just really shows that Christopher Ward went above and beyond when designing this watch and just the execution here is just absolutely incredible. Uh, and right now I'll just take a second too to actually play some of the chimes. So if you pull out the stem here at the two o'clock and you roll it forward, you will be able to hear the chime. I'll bring it kind of close here. And you see the hammer see the hammer is slowly winding up there as it's getting closer and closer to uh it looks like six o'clock now and as soon as it passes the 12 o'clock mark just beautiful just so well made um again the hammer's char charging there it's charging it's pulling back it's pulling back and then it releases and all this work here in the middle too you see that there is a central pinion here that has a snail uh, cam on it. And it's as it's pulling back, um, you'll see right before it hits, right there in the middle where they actually have a cutout so you can see everything that's going on, which is so freaking cool. Um, as soon as it passes this little mark here where the hammer gong connects to it, the whole bridge here snaps up which releases the pressure on the hammer and then the hammer hits the gong. Um, Christopher Ward talked about how many times they had to test this, how many different materials they tested. I think it took them three or four years just to perfect the sound and the materials that they used. And it just shows that you don't have to pay hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands or millions of dollars to get a really well thought out watch. Um, there's some watchmakers out there like Christopher Ward 
or, you know, I'd even say like Omega compared to the other big houses too, you know, their chiming mechanisms are much cheaper than an Audemars Piguet or a, a Patek Philippe. You know, there's watchmakers out there that are willing to put a quality product together that you can actually afford someday. Uh, and Christopher Ward, you know, their R&D department just hit it out of the, had to hit it out of the park here. Uh, in the construction category of my ranking, I gave the watch uh, 20.5 points out of 25 points. Again, you know, just overall, the quality of construction, the quality of materials, the quality of finishing just really shines through on this watch. There wasn't a lot that I could take uh, many points off for. I'm just going for overall quality, right? I gave it a five out of five points. I look at the case, the dial, the hands, the finishing, everything. And Christopher Ward really stepped up to deliver its first luxury level watch, I'd say, and ensure that the overall quality and finishing exceeded expectations. It is not easy to have this level of polishing on a watch. It is easy if you know, the watch costs $100,000 and you can spend a lot of that money on your quality control teams and you know your um, backup teams and your R&D. But Christopher Ward didn't have that. These watches aren't selling for $100,000, they're selling for $3,600. And they're also not being made you know, in the thousands or hundreds of thousands of watches, like Rolex, you know, makes a million watches a year. Christopher Ward does not make nearly any of that. And so it is really just impressive that, you know, the anglage applied to the hammer and the various, um, you know, sides of the structure is polished to a mirror-like finish. And that's a level of quality that, you know, you expect from the Omegas, you expect from Chopard, you expect from Rolex, but you don't expect it from, you know, a Christopher Ward or, you know, a lower tier um, watch manufacturer. Uh, in terms of materials, uh, I already mentioned that the case and the case back, uh, I'll show you the case back here for a second, uh, which has this beautiful pattern. Uh, and even the buckle uh, is all in grade five titanium. Um, you know, while other manufacturers use titanium for a variety of reasons, mostly for its hardness, resilience, and strength, Christopher Ward actually chose this material for a very specific reason, which is resonance, right? It turns out that titanium is an excellent resonator. So when sound is created inside this titanium case, it actually resonates really well between the walls and the case back. This, um, this pattern on the case back is supposedly, um, supposedly allows the resonance to increase even more. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a gong here that maybe only creates you know 30 or 40 decibels of sound and you're basically resonating it within the case so that it actually becomes louder than it is. And so I think some other people have measured it, but you know the, the gong in here is in the low 50s of decibels, which um, is not the loudest uh, for chiming watches, but it's definitely something you can hear if you're sitting in your office or you're walking around or you're at a, a dinner where you know there's only a couple people or it's not a very loud restaurant, you will hear this, uh, which is again, just really, really cool. Um, resistances, so I look at, when I review watches, I look at water, resistance, magnetism, and shock. Um, and it's kind of easy to figure out uh, how Christopher Ward did this because they use a Solita SW200 movement, which is a fantastic off-the-shelf movement, nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, the Belcanto is mostly a dress watch, and its resistance specs are what is expected for a dress watch, right? You have 30 meters of water resistance. If you're swimming in this, I don't know what's wrong with you, but sure, I guess you could. Um, and that's good enough for, you know, splashes and washing the dishes and whatnot. Um, and, you know, the base caliber SW200 comes standard with either a, a Novadiac or an Inca Block anti-shock system, which, again, is just fine. Um, the magnetism isn't anything to write home about. Um, I believe it has a thousand Gauss uh, resistance, which is standard for Salidas. Um, the ancillaries on the watch, so I look at the lugs, I look at the crown, which this is a signed crown, which is always nice. Uh, and other extremities, so also this pusher here located at four, which is the uh, charging hammer section. And if you do that here, you can actually hear the gong over and over again, which is really cool. Um, so I look at all of these, and I gave this a four and a half out of five points. Um, the Belcanto's crown and pushers especially are just really well balanced. I like how they're both on the same side of the watch so that all of your ancillaries are over here and you're not distracted by, you know, um, like an Omega style um, stub over here or anything else. Uh, the time setting crown has ample grip, so it's really easy to grip it and move it. Uh, it's a single pull out crown, which is nice, and there's no ghost date, which is great. Uh, Salidas do come equipped with the dates. Uh, Chris Reward stripped that out, so there is no double pull, it's a single pull, very nice. 
uh, the chime pusher or selector, I guess, at the end here. Um, you know, very subtle. Um, it does have some brushed finishing on the edge, and then it has some mirror polishing uh, on the other edges. Um, again, it's just, it's not meant to distract from the rest of the watch, and that's what Christopher Ward went for, right? It's right here. It's in line with the pusher. I'm sorry, with the uh, gong, so you can see what it's doing exactly. It's rotating this little gear here. That's essentially turning the watch on and off, right? And it's just really well placed. I think it makes it so when you have it on your wrist like this, right? And let's say you're walking into a meeting or you're going to dinner, you're charged. Let's say you're going to a meeting, off. And you can see it right here. There's this little black beak that indicates if it's on or off. And you can see that the harm, the hammer is uh, pulled back, so it's uncharged. And it just it really makes it so easy to just wear this watch, know what it's going to do. You know when it's going to chime, you know when it's not. Um, and it just, again, just really good execution. Um, and execution isn't always just perfection, right? Execution is also, um, you know, ease of use for the user. Um, you know, is it easy to understand, right? If you give this to somebody else and they put it on their wrist, they can figure out within about like five seconds how to turn the thing off, how to turn it off, and how to you know set the time, and that's really good. There, you know, some of the more complicated watches that have chiming mechanisms, not very easy uh, to operate. So this was really cool to see. Um, moving on to you know the movement, um, I cover this generally for all my watches. Um, obviously, this is a little bit more complicated because the movement isn't the seller here; it's really what's on top of the dial. But for these purposes, we're going to consider, um, you know, the gong, the hammer, the whole striking mechanisms. We're, we're going to consider that part of the movement here. So the movement I gave 19 and a half out of 25 points. Um, and I start with the origin of the movement usually, which is, you know, is it Swiss or is it sourced? Uh, is it in-house? And what does the design come from? So despite its young age, Chris Ward's ability to create innovative movements um, is undeniable. Uh, the Belcanto's movement, which is called the Caliber FS01, uh, is primarily constructed of an advanced module that sits on top of a Salida SW200 base movement. And the mo module is actually derived from an earlier movement, the Caliber JJ01, uh, that was created for a jumping hour complication that Christopher Ward's head watchmaker uh, adapted for a Sunri movement that was used in a Meissenser. Uh, so while the Caliber FS1 isn't considered a fully in-house movement, right? The 50, the 50 parts up here, uh, including the central, um, you know, the central cam there, um, all these parts, the hammer, the, the gong itself, that's all in-house designed. Um, and that's not easy, right? So you take an SW200 movement and you say, okay, I want to make it make sound. Um, that, that's not just something that you can Google, right? It took Chris Reward three years to develop this, to perfect it, to test it. Um, and so it just goes to show that they took something that was uncomplicated. They wanted to put something, they wanted to put a complicated movement into it, but they didn't want the final design to be overly complicated, overly complex, um, you know, not clean. And so again, you know, they really just nailed the execution here. I think there's no, there's nothing here that I can really say, oh, I don't like that. I, I think this cam is weird. I think this gear is weird. I think this is out of place. None of that. I can't tell you anything on this watch that I think uh, is not set up um, in, in a perfect way. Um, for the complications, I usually look at the design, the usefulness, uh, the integration, and the operation of uh, the complications. And as I just said, you know, that's like a five out of five points in my book. Um, you know, in the world of complications, there are a few complications that typically inspire awe. And almost universally, all of those have a price tag to match, right? Like you have hot horology complications, including, you know, the tourbillon, perpetual calendar, um, very striking mechanisms like a minute repeater. Um, you know, the Belcanto striking mechanism here um, is a rare complication in its own right. You don't see this in many watches. Maybe, you know, maybe there's 25,000 made a year across all the different watch manufacturers. And here you have one that... Not only is it made accessible at its price point, but it's also made so you can actually enjoy it. Um, almost all other chiming mechanisms are usually on the backside of the watch through a you know a sapphire crystal that you can see, um, and it's just really cool to be able to see it like on your wrist on the day you know on a daily basis when you're just walking down the street. You can be like, oh, I'm look you know that guy's wearing a chiming mechanism. That's really cool. Um, so it, it does you know the way that Christopher Ward set it up. 
It allows the wearer to enjoy the complicated architecture of the curved bell and the delicate hammer. And it's just really cool that, um, you know, you get to look down at your wrist when you're walking down the street in the sun and you see the sunburst style, which in and of itself, I think is worth the $3,000, honestly. But then you get all this other hardware on top of it and it just blows you out of the park every time. I'm Every time I wear this watch, I am just immensely impressed by it. Um, in terms of, you know, accuracy and power reserve, right? This is a Salita SW200 movement. It's the base model that they usually have. It's not the lowest model. It's not the SW100, but it's not also the SW300, which has, you know, all the, the bells and whistles and the uh, La Bourget finishing. Um, with the SW200, you get 29 joules. It's expected to be accurate between plus and minus uh, seven seconds. Um, and while it's not, you know, COSC certified or not a chronometer either, I think the Belcanto is accurate enough for daily use. Um, my Belcanto is running about six seconds fast a day, um, daily in a, in a rotating uh, case. Um, and I think that's perfectly acceptable for a $3,600 watch. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, my IWCs, my other watches on the other hand, I expect a little bit better performance than they do perform, but for 3,600 bucks and for how complicated this is and all the power that this takes and, you know, making sure that all the, um, all the gears work together and stuff and still deliver that, you know, the power reserve of 38 hours and the, the, the accuracy of plus minus seven seconds. Uh, Christopher Ward, you know, did a great job there. Um, and lastly, the last thing I look at when I look at movements, usually, um, usually I review watches that have um, sapphire crystal backs because I really like to see the work. I think it's important to see the watchmakers work more so than, you know, the case itself. Um, so I usually look at, you know, the decoration, the finishing, the architecture, the rotor of the movement itself. Um, obviously we can't see any of that here um, because they are using this resonator case. Um, however, you know, based on what we know about an SW200 movement, um, it's probably pretty industrial looking on the backside. Uh, they probably use a base rotor. It's probably not signed by Christopher Ward because why would you do that if no one's ever gonna see it? Um, however, you know, you can see that all the gears here, at least that are um, visible through this little cutout here, um, are all polished really nicely. Um, those are standard uh, Salita parts that they must have polished a little bit to make them just you know shine on the side of the dial. And I really just think that um, you know all these gears here um, that were basically taken from the bottom and pulled up above the plantain, it shows that Christopher Ward really put a high level of finishing on a base level um, module movement. Um, so it shows that, you know, they were thinking about it. Um, obviously, I don't expect, you know, a, a solid gold rotor, you know, hiding under here or anything. Um, I'm not going to undo it to find out, but I doubt that's that's what's under there. But um, again, for the, the money that you're paying, I think you're getting what you are paying for. Um, lastly, in my reviews, I look at, you know, other factors. Generally, the, you know, I look at factors including price, quality control, um, any certifications, uh, the warranty provided, and the presentation box, because you know you pay a lot of money for it, you might as well get a nice box out of it. Um, and again, you know, Christopher Ward went above and beyond and scored 21 out of 25 points. There wasn't a ton I can take a lot of points away from. Um, you know, starting with uh, the price, you know, I usually look at MSRP, I look at secondary. Uh, new prices, I look at secondary use prices, and I just generally look at the value proposition of a watch. Um, not a lot of these are available on the secondary market, and if they are, they're selling for one one and a half to maybe two times the cost. Uh, and that's basically because people want to skip the waiting line, which I waited nine months to get my watch. And so they're willing to pay a bunch of money to somebody else uh, who's gotten their watch already. Um, I will not be selling this, so don't ask me for it. Um, but, you know, for a mere $3,600, right, you're getting a solid grade five titanium watch with a custom design case, a sunburst dial made by Armin Strom, which is a very well-respected company in the watch world. Um, you're, you're getting hands and other superstructure parts sourced from Chronode, and you're getting an in-house developed Sonri a Passage complicated movement. Not only that, but the watch is finished flawlessly. There's no stray dust particles. There's no misaligned indices or anything else that I can look at. And I looked at this thing under a loop even. Um, you know, the fact that Christopher Ward was able to pull all this together for under $4,000 for just 3,600 US dollars, 
I think the fact that they pulled this out, pulled this off for under ten thousand dollars is honestly pretty impressive. If this if this was listed for nine 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 nine, like if it was just under ten thousand dollars, I would probably buy it still. Uh, and and that tells you something because at that price range, you're moving into you know some pretty expensive Omegas. You're moving into the Rolex territory. I think I would still choose this just because of the novelty of it and just how well it's built. Uh, quality control, you know, as I mentioned a little bit, you know, I look at finishing, dial cleanliness, mechanical and known issues. I gave Chris Ward here four out of five stars. Um, you know, their quality control really had to step it up for this model, given that it's a complex construction. It's really easy to screw something up, to have a smudge somewhere. There's a lot of polished areas. Uh, the sunburst dial, um, it's easy to see as soon as you move it if there's any if there's going to be any dust particles or a smudge or anything else, and so they were working under a very you know stressful situation here, and I just think they nailed it. Each piece of the bridge, the hammer, the gong, everything is perfectly polished. It re reflects smoothly. Um, there isn't any you know excess waviness. Um, you know there's no warping in the gong, which I can't believe they pulled that off. Where you have this huge piece of stainless steel or titanium i forgot what the gong is but you, know, you have this huge piece here that's um curling around the whole side of the case and it is perfect there is no warping there is no the the reflections reflect evenly at the top and the bottom when you when you move it through the light it's just incredible that they're able to do that um, it just shows that they put a lot of time effort into this i looked at it under a 10x uh, loop uh, that has an LED light on it too, still cannot see any imperfections. So they really killed it here. Um, moving on to just some of the other ancillary items here. You know, the, the warranty, I think Chris Reward honestly gives one of the better warranties in the industry. So it's called their 6060 guarantee, uh, which I think is one of the better deals. Um, so you get free returns for 60 days of purchase. So if you don't like it, you can return it within 60 days um, and you get your money back. You know, we all know when you buy something from your AD, uh, you know, your typical brick and mortar shop, which Chris Reward doesn't have any, um, you know, you typically get a 30 day return period, maybe a 14 day return period for um, return of payment. And then anything after that, after that 14 to 30 days is credit only. Chris Reward gives you uh, 60 days cash back, you get it back. Uh, they also have a 60 month warranty, which is their the second half of that 60 60 guarantee. So it's a five-year warranty on the movement and other internals of the watch. Um, it's really nice. I, you know, I think it's nice to put your name behind the product and give people a five-year warranty. And what I also liked is that the warranty is five years from the moment you open the box. Um, there's no websites or portals or other steps necessary to activate that warranty. You know, some other watch manufacturers like Panerai or other ones, you know, they have these extended warranty ideas where. You know, you get like a two year warranty and then if you go online and you register your watch and they can get to pester you with marketing emails every day, they'll give you another three years, maybe four years on top of it. Um, Christopher Ward just comes straight out of the box, five year warranty, nothing else for you to do. No websites, no portals, no, you know, creating a new password that you're going to forget yesterday or tomorrow. Um, it's just it's nice that they just start right out the box with a five year warranty that uh, is better than most of the other industry uh, you know, players in the game. And lastly, uh, the presentation box. If you go on the actual blog that I run, um, I took a bunch of pictures of the presentation box. It's really nice. It has this like wood that is like this like recovered wood box uh, texture, and then it's wrapped in a uh, vegan leather that is just really, really well done. You know, I have a lot of watches. I've opened a lot of watch boxes. I have very impressive boxes, right? Like the Omega box is just absolutely beautiful. Um, Chris Ward's, you know, isn't the most impressive bo presentation box, but it's definitely one that I think, um, you know, reflects the watch itself. It comes, you know, it's laying flat in the box. Uh, you kind of get to see what you're getting right away. It just, it matches the watch um, and, and just the idea of the watch and just the finishing of the watch, I think, is reflective in the presentation. And I think that's really important. Um, so yeah, so that's my first review of this watch, guys. Again, um, please check out uh, my blog, which has the full written review, which breaks down um, every single criteria that I go through when I review watches. Again, I go through you know the design of the watch, the construction of the watch. I also talk about the movement inside the watch, and I go through other factors as well. 
So I really try to give a holistic experience here. I feel like a lot of these other, you know, watch reviewers give you like subjective terms. They don't really like tell you anything or they just basically read off the website. Um, this is a real review, right? And I want to give you real thoughts um, and real, you know, ideas to, you know, help hopefully inform your decision on whether to buy a specific watch. Uh, if I had to advise anyone on what watch to buy next, if they had $4,000, this is it right here. Thanks for joining.